had a very bad problem. I'm not gonna. You nearly died, right? Yeah, he, he gave given, you two uh, weeks to I'd live. Given two weeks to live, yeah. basically. If I'd carried on from that moment, and that's when I suppose the penny started dropping. Uh, I then ended up the next week. How did you feel when he said that to you? I was ready to go. In all honesty. You just ready to give up? Yeah, I was ready. I thought, well, I, if I'm going to keel over, I'll just, I'll just carry on until it happens. But then what happened was my illnesses, which I had. I had TB, hepatitis, chemical depression, chemical hepatitis, chemical this. Uh, this was just this was cocaine, right? The, the, Mo was the yeah, for the most part. Most part. Uh, I was boozing still, um, but that wasn't my drug of choice, as mm. they say. Cocaine was the one that took me to the depths of depravity. Uh, so I was, um, uh, I say, entrenched in that whole cycle and behaviour. Uh, I then came out of the meeting with him and said, right, okay, and I, had a, I sort of had a choice, I suppose. This is where my penny dropped. I was in the hospital again that week in the A&E department holding my, like this, and scratching and all these, uh, ready to, in agony. And the, the drugs were no longer masking the pain. The painkillers were no masking the pain. The, the, you know, all the, the benzo, the, none of the drugs I was taking, none of it was masking the pain because I was dying. My body was giving up on me. And so. did you have people around you that, that you know, friends, family, oh, people I mean, the, that... You, you couldn't tell me anything. It wasn't, a, a, and unfortunately, when you get into that state, no one can. You have to be ready to do it yourself. You have to come to that decision because. And what? What was that? Switch? Well, this is what I'm sitting in that hospital and I'm thinking, I, 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 how long is it until I go? Because I cannot carry on like this. And then I summit inside, so you're not going to go that quickly. So make a decision. Do you want to carry on or do you want to just stop? And I, I sort of went, I've had enough. I've had enough of this battle in my mind. I've had enough of this whole behaviour and cycle I mean of getting and using and I just said this is not and at that moment my, I felt my brain drop like a clunk it went boom like all the neurons from the antagonistic thoughts going on like do I don't I should I shouldn't I blah 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 and it always went bang and it clicked my brain went so I think all the anxiety and the under, underlying stress that I've been under mm. just left and I had a moment of clarity although I was still really ill and still caught up in the whole process but it just went and I went took a deep breath and went wow I had a moment that moment of clarity we're all the same and this is once you accept that you know we're creatures of habit we aim for pleasure we want to do so if something makes us feel good we're going to do more of it of course and if it's a substance it, it, the reason we take substances often is because it acts quick you don't have to work for it so if you go to the gym you feel great, but you have to put half hour, two hours, yeah. three hours work. Live, live, quite the work. same either, but yes. Well, yeah, it's quite the same, but you know, it can it, be. Yeah, it's yeah. fundamentally, it's what we need to do. Yeah. We exercise, exercise our bodies and our minds. Whereas if it's a substance, it's a quick fix. And often your environment doesn't allow you to maybe go to the gym or maybe go for a run or do, maybe your environment is just difficult and you just go for the quickest fix. And that's what your mind will tell you. Because it wants the quick change. It doesn't want to work so there'd be happiness because I think over the years, and from what I've been reading lately, the programming that's been done to us subconsciously as a species, see the clever buggers, the philosophers and all the people who thought a long, long time ago and actually started thinking... Well, they were all on something, weren't they? Well, they but created different, systems. Different well, things. maybe, I, who knows what they were doing, but they, they realised the potential of power and knowledge and they instructed people, small groups of people, to become... Conditioned and over the years it's been handed down through the centuries through the generations blah 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 And that's how we are in systems that we are now and I've read I, that book sapiens. It's just incredible I loved it and I'm yeah, I need to that read book. that a lot of people have recommended um, that I'm quoting you know Yuri Novel Hari anyway Hari that's the name of the guy so But so if you think about these systems set in place mm. So the, the routines you get into with the drugs or the alcohol or whatever your bad behaviors are um, They become Entrenched, they become yeah, the habits. Autopilots. Yeah, autopilots. Yeah, autopilots. Yeah. Habits. Yeah. Uh, so I go to the gym every day. That's a good autopilot in a in a way, but it's still it's an obsession. As long as you don't obsess obsession. about it, yeah. then it's good. Yeah. But if you sit there going, oh, I've got to go to the gym. I've got to go to the gym. I've got to go to the gym. I can't leave the gym. And you're obsessing. Yeah. It becomes problematic because it overtakes your life. So you have to find a balance. Well, I just finished working with the NHS, working with people with real life issues doing outreach, going to their houses, working very, very closely with them, uh, intense support, changing small parts of their lives, fingers crossed, hopefully for the better. And I took a lot of it on board because I had an empathy. Yeah. Because I've been there, in a way. Um, and I had this innate 
wanting to help people, but I do it a lot. I want to help people a lot, which maybe, you know, it's a bit too much for them. So I came in this house and I was doing my self-therapy because I'd taken burnout while I'd left that job in the NHS. They hadn't supported us the right way. So it was actually the company called who worked in the NHS. I was really working under the umbrella of the NHS. So we didn't get the support we required. Uh, Consequently, I get burnout, and I go into the Big Brother house with burnout. So I'm actually okay. feeling emotionally drained, mentally yeah. drained, yeah. physically drained, a whole lot. And I'm supposed to be someone that they still think and still whatever. thinks is existent in the room, and he's not. Mm. I mean, if I was like I am now, I'd have been much more integral in part of the house, but mm. I wasn't. And I, I, it's just for me, the psychiatrist who turns out being a very good fan of mine, who was a mate, and we turned to be mates. I saw him every day in the house, and he said, "Look," he, he, he said, "I can't see, I can't see you do this to yourself in here." He said, you're putting yourself through therapy, it's not good, not on telly. I said, okay, he said, look, you can go. And I went, oh, I'll leave. So I left all the money, and left everything, I just left. Um, but it's experience, you know, and, and looking back, look what I've got now. I've, it led me to the world that we're, we're in now. So that's it, that word, if you say personal development, you say, well, you've just developed a deal for It's growth. Growth. Well, who, who else are you helping? Because if you go to some of the, the bigger life coaches who, who, who advocate for this lifestyle, mm. where's contribution in personal growth? You contribute well, yeah, to yourself. yourself. Yeah. You see, help yourself. Yeah. So we change the word. I use a different word. Mm. I use it as well being or self, self enlightenment. Mm. Okay? I mean, self is self, but selfless. Or selfless enlightenment. Selfless. Selfless is nice. Selfless, selfless enlightenment. Nice. There you go. Selfless, selfless person development. Selfless person development. Well, there you go. That's more where... So when I went and experienced that whole... Uh, I did, Tony Robbins, I love the event. I mm. love going to the UK. I feel like just the energy is fantastic. But what, what, what frustrated me was... How much it cost in the back of the room. If you were to write a message in a bottle for future generations to find, what would that message be? Don't let the bastards get you down. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, there's a new interview out every Monday, so hit subscribe and like and you'll get it straight into your inbox.